That is a lot of stamps. But that's because this box has come all the way from Poland. It is a set of promotional items from Spellcrow Miniatures um, as part of their Crusaders program. I have volunteered to do some demo games for them in Glasgow. And to that end, the lovely Tatiana at Spellcrow has sent me some bits. And rather than just open them on my own and drool all over them in the privacy of my own home, I decided I'd be a bit of an exhibitionist and open this little packet as a group with you guys. Is it, is it hashtag spawn? Oh, I don't know. Let's just get it open, shall we? Do, 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 do. I loves my knife. I loves my knife. Turns out doing things like this while looking for the camera is hard. Ashen's had a point. What do we have in here? Well, we've got an advert for a 10 mil game that they're working on. Now, up until now, I knew Spellcrow more for 28 mil figures. They did um, sci-fi equivalents. I've got some of my Chaos Space Marines. I've got some of their bits and I knew they had fantasy, but I didn't realize they did had 10 mil in the way, and this looks like another Battle of Morton. Interesting, some more skirmish style figures, but it's presumably different from their Umbra Taurus range. What do we have here? We have General Issue Catalogue, Umbra Taurus, that's the thing that I've been asked mostly to demo, some of the fantasy figures for it. Umber Taurus is a game with a very sort of urban skirmish affair to it. Maybe like half a dozen, a dozen max figures. See here, there's a variety of, this, variety of different races included. They do starter kits for a couple of races, but they do these more mixed match affairs too. Now, here is the meat of the affair a whole bunch of lovely, lovely resins. So the two demo teams that I've got are Dwarf and Hobgoblin. So these dwarfs here. Look at, look at the boozy boy. So, so drunk. Uh, whereas the Hobgoblins, I mean, the dwarfs have a more standard issue fantasy dwarf, but the Hobgoblins, they were giving me touches of the like Jim Henson's Labyrinth goblins to them, or the, what do you call them? The dwarf with big gun, yeah. He's, that is a big gun. Maybe a bit of the Pathfinder goblins, or the goblins from Magic, you know, the big exaggerated ears. I mean, that's a separate headpiece, but... There he is. There's his face, and there's his big exaggerated ears. I mean, obviously, when we're talking about fantasy figures, it's hard not to talk about Warhammer. And it's hard, for example, not to compare this game to more time, comparatively speaking. Hobgoblin in armor. But the look's not quite the same for my money, Hobgoblin with spear. There is a, there's a very squarely Central European grittiness to the setting and to the figures. I mean, like this Hobgoblin with crossbow, Tubby boy in a monocle, some sort of skull cod piece. I mean, the skull cod piece could easily work in your sort of old world style, but there's something very sort of. I'm trying to think quite what other sort of, you know, aesthetic to keep compare them to, but yeah, there is a touch of the sort of dark medieval fairy tale to affairs. Goblin dagger and sling. So these boosters are all seem to be single figure boosters. There we go, have a little look at the back text, but you know, you can probably take a guess at the premise. Come up to two final ones, Hulk Goblin with shovel. He's got a bit of a Baron Sam Day thing going on, hasn't he? Either that or T-Pain. And what if T-Pain is Baron Sam Day in disguise? Right, don't think about it too hard. And Dwarf Rune Priest with Hammer. I think that was the leader of the Dwarf team. 
If you're counting at home, I'm not, but if you are counting, you will notice slightly more hobgoblins and dwarfs. That is because half giant with horned helmet and half giant with black powder gun are providing some heavy support to the dwarfs. It's another opportunity for a knife. I loves my knife. I, did you, I didn't realise they had these kind of boxes for the larger figures, but it makes sense with the size of them. Okay, so this guy is saying to me, there's a bit of a kind of Hellboy touch to him. That kind of like hard face, the powerful jaw. Compared to the regular sized figures, he's, yeah, he's a good, ooh. I mean, that dwarf doesn't even come up to his neck, I think. So, yeah, I can see it's maybe a little overkill to have him in a dedicated bag. But, oh, oh, wait. It's it's really not. It's really not overkill. I didn't realise there's bits. There's actually quite a lot of bits. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And something very similar here. Kind of misplaced my knife, not when I love it so much. This boy that is that helmet is saying like a skate slave or something, isn't it? Again, big base, but also accessories to give him a really honking big axe. And then, describing some of their other bits and pieces, they do sort of generic fantasy and sci-fi terrain and base type things, as well as these figures. So, there's the Hobgoblin armor, that's one of the guys we got today. Dwarf with big gun, there they are, painted much nicer than I am going to be able to. But we can also see that there's a plethora of the standard, you know, halfling, demon... Now the kind of one of the specific things to the background here is the Dyniax. Kind of little pumpkin headed fairy type creatures. But they they are quite cool, I've got to say. So what's the plan with these? Well, not like I needed more figures to do, but I don't really do much fantasy gaming right now, and I thought that this quite sizable pile um is only actually about mm, 12, 14 figures probably. I can probably get them painted up fairly quickly, especially if I enlist some uh, <laughs> some assistance from my, my sidekicks. And then I can run a couple of little demo games of this, see if it's something that interests me and crucially interests my, uh, my Glasgow chums. From a little look at the rules, it's quite flexible. It's you can you could play single or multi-race teams and they each have advantages. You can play a variety of different standard um, races and a couple of them have kind of culture variations. You know, you're kind of like dwarfs v chaos dwarfs, wood elves v like high elves, that kind of idea. There is some, you know, some scope for, for variety there. Um, and yet then you kind of get these quite small, punchy, urban sprawls as they fight over, you know, magical treasure and terrain and um, what else do people fight over? Pie, ducks, small rocks, you know, the whole lot. So I am going to have a little look at these, see what I can do. I mean, I'm probably not going to be able to paint them straight away because... Don't know how much you out of towners realise this, Britain is going through some bonkers weather right now. I actually got stuck overnight in Manchester. Um, went down for a day, tried to get the train back up. All trains to Scotland just, nope, just stopped at the border because of flooding. So uh, that was fun. But yeah, there's a lot of rain, a lot of wind. There's been pretty grim outside. So I will try and paint these guys soon. But um, until then, I, oh, I can't, I can't do my hand. Okay, we'll have to do it solo. Right, okay. Till then, rock over London, rock on Chicago. It's not, it's not really the same, is it? 